boys and girls, welcome back to Wednesday Summer Club with me, Colin. And we're in Belfast again at Carmel Street in Belfast. And all of these streets we're mentioning over the last few weeks, and this week and next week, is about streets in the Belfast named after Bible places. So let's find out. But before we go to visit Elijah on Carmel Street, let's sing a song. Here we go. Deep and wide. So we find Belfast and in Belfast we're going to find a lovely street called Carmel Street and learn about what happened up on the mountain. Here we go. G'day boys and girls. I'm still walking around Belfast here. It's a beautiful day. It's summertime. Summer club. And the street here is called Carmel Street. And I thought, Carmel Street? I love Carmel. But then it's not Carmel. That's, that's like a nice sweet. But I thought about Carmel in the Bible. See, there's a developer here called Robert McConnell. He was in the Victorian age. He was a developer. He traveled a lot to the Middle East. And he had been to Israel and been to Egypt And whenever he was a developer in Belfast. So this was just no man's land or wasteland. And he would develop it and build houses for people to live in. And of course, whenever you build a street, a street needs a name. And quite often it's named after something local. But he obviously named these after places he had been to. And there's lots of other names. There's, there's Palestine Street. There's Damascus Street. There's Jerusalem Street. Now I've got Carmel Street. And whenever I think of Carmel, it... it it reminds me of one of the most famous characters in the Bible, which I really love dearly, and it's called Elijah. Whenever King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, they built a big golden idol called Baal, and they warned all the people, you're now no longer allowed to worship your God in heaven. You must bow down to the God Baal, or you'll be uh, punished. But Elijah came and challenged the king and said, why have you told us to stop worshiping God? We love God with all of our heart. And the king denied that and said, your God's not even real, Elijah. We are now just like God. We've got wealth. We've got popularity. We don't need God to interfere. And anyone who wants to worship must worship our God. Even the king realized people naturally want to worship something. And that's why God made people, so we could worship him and always do that. But Elijah says, because of this law that you're making, I'm going to ask God to turn off the rain. And God turned off the rain for three and a half years. And there was famine and, and drought in the country. God then hid Elijah by a little brook called Cherith. And every day for two years, raven birds came and fed Elijah. Every morning and every night with bread, fresh bread and fresh meat. And I thought, there's a famine, yet there's fresh bread and fresh meat. These birds 
uh, ravens are scavengers, part of the blackbird magpie family. They don't normally share their food, they steal their food and would chase other birds away. Yet these birds listen to the voice of God when he spoke to him and obeyed him and brought food without eating it. And I thought sometimes we can think God doesn't love us, God can't use us, or he has got favourites. God does not have favourites. He's no respecter of persons. And the king eventually caught up with Elijah after two years, and he was so angry with Elijah, he blamed him because the country was now barren and almost destroyed. And Elijah says, no, don't blame me. You told me God's not real. I told you God's going to turn off the rain, and you laughed at God in his face. So God did turn off the rain. But then Elijah became very bold, and he said, let's have a competition. Let's have your God, the false God called Baal, against my God, the God of heaven. And they went up into a mountain called Mount Carmel. Hence, this street is named after this mountain, Mount Carmel. And there was 450 false prophets promoting the false god Baal against Elijah. And Elijah told them to build a sacrifice. And he asked, he said, get your false god to burn it or to set a fire in it. If he can do it, he's a true god. If man can do it, my god's a true god. So he said, you go first. So they, they began to sing and jump and dance and cut themselves, screaming at the false god Baal to light the fire. Of course, a false god, it's eyes but can't see, it's got a mouth that can't speak, ears that can't hear, and it's just an idol, and God forbids us to worship idols or to have any graven images. And then Elijah says, before my God will light the fire, I want you to get four, 12 barrels of water and go and get it and completely drench it and soak it. Then he said, God, would you please teach these people today on top of Mount Carmel that you are the one true and living God. Bang! He says, God, send a fire and the fire comes straight down from heaven and exploded into flames, licked up all the stones, all the water and the sacrifice. And that day, all 450 false prophets died. And Elijah says, listen, here comes the rain. He sent someone over to check the clouds and a wee cloud the size of a man's fist that was getting bigger. And he told the king, you need to go home because I can hear the rain coming. And the king is terrified because he found Elijah. He's still alive. His God has beaten him again. And all of his 450 false prophets have died in the mountain. And he's on his horse and chariot and he's going as fast as he can up the road. And the Bible says Elijah on his bare feet was able to overtake and run faster than the king. Whenever the king went home, he began to cry and lament. And the queen said, what's wrong with you? And he said, Elijah's God has just beaten me and all the false prophets have died. And the queen says to, to the king, by this time tomorrow, I will make sure Elijah is dead. And Elijah was a champion for God. He was on fire for God. But whenever he heard that news, the Bible says he ran for over a hundred miles and he sat under a juniper tree and he wanted to give up. And God sent an angel and God sent, uh, give him food and give him water and told him to go back to his people. But Elijah hides in a cave and God sends an earthquake and a whirlwind and fire and he can't see God. Then God speaks, Elijah, why are you hiding here? And Elijah says, the still small voice of God. Elijah says, because I'm the only Christian who's dead true to you. God says, Elijah, that's not true. There's 7,000 people and they never listened to the king. They never bowed down to the idol. They stayed true to me, but they're not running. They're not hiding. They're not being discouraged. They're not sitting under a tree. They're not wanting to die. They want to live for me. And he says, go back to your people and tell them all about me and encourage them to keep going on for God. Plus, I have a new prophet called Elisha. Go and find him. So that's a wonderful story for Elijah. And Elijah didn't have to die because one day he was out walking and God sends down a horse and chariot made of fire and caught him up in a whirlwind. And Elijah then went straight up into heaven to be with God forever. So that was a man who stood up for God against a king because he knew the most important th thing for me is my walk and my relationship with God. And nobody, not even the king, is going to take that from me. So boys and girls, if you love the Lord with all your heart, be strong. And whenever people speak against God, speak up for God, but ask God to help you, give you the words and give you the courage to do that. You might lose everything. You might be laughed at. You might be made fun of. But remember, it's the people making fun of God, not making fun of you. So a lovely story how God was triumphant and overruled that day on the Mount 
Carmel. And I thought, people walking through these streets, living on Mount Carmel, they can search up the story and read it for themselves in the Bible, how God used a man called Elijah to stand up for him against all odds. And a great battle was won that day on Mount Carmel. So this man, Robert McConnell, that obviously impacted him for him to call this Carmel Street because he knew it was a victory for God. And all these years later, 300 years later, people can walk up a street and because he named it Carmel, they can find their way to God through reading and searching about Carmel, the victory on the mountain because Elijah was the one who lived for God. God needs people to live for him to then to shine for him. I wonder, can you be one of those people? God bless you and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Really enjoyed uh, visiting Carmel Street today in Belfast, learning all about Elijah. Let's sing a little song, God's Love is Very Wonderful. Don't forget to sing along. Enjoy the rest of your summer and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.